Hello, welcome to the Michael Finkley Show. I'm Michael Finkley. Today is Wednesday, August 26, 2020. Y'all, halfway through the week. Keep trugging. I believe in you. Keep going. <laughs> if you have not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Michael Finkler Show, and ring that bell for notification, and you will see an email from us saying, hey, new content is uploaded. Thank you to all the supporters, all the viewers out there. You guys rock. You're making my dreams come true. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and you giving. You're allowing still persons with amazing stories, and they're doing amazing things to have a platform right here on The Michael Finkler Show. Thank you so much. So before we get to the show, I want to let you, just wanted to ask the question, have you counted your blessings lately? Have you truly named them one by one? Have you thought about them? Have you written them down? I'm telling you, the good always outweighs the bad. Trust me, talking from experience. Y'all, today's show, Mr. Trey Gimmage. Trey and I have been knowing each other for some time now, and you know, we're in the same arena when it comes to consulting. And I tell you, he has some awesome things happening with him within his overall vision for himself. So when we come back, you will, we will be talking with Trey. Okay, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Next, we chat with Mr. Trey Gimmage. We'll be right back. On the next Michael Finkley, Friday, we have Senator Kevin Johnson with us as we talk about family, his political career, the upcoming election, and what's next for him in the future. Don't you dare miss the next Michael Finkley. Hey, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. As you know, we are continuing on and we have a special, special guest with us today. Uh, I tell you, he is a founder and owner of his own consulting firm. He is an educator. He is a mentor. He is an author. Troy, how many names do you have? He's going to tell you the rest of them, though. Everyone, please introducing to you all, Mr. Trey Gimmage. Trey, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to be on the show, Michael. Um, I know we've been we've been talking. I feel like it's been about a year now, so I'm excited oh, it's, it's to join been you. Like five. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm excited to see all the good things you're doing, and you know, fellow oh. entrepreneurs um, doing our best to to support our students and our school communities. Definitely. Yes, sir. And I tell you, he's seen it from the beginning, y'all. Like when I first started my business, he was like, I think you were the first one to actually interview really? me on um, wow. that platform. So, bruh, yeah. Following you, man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You, I mean, we, you know, we, we blaze a trail for one another. And I think that's been a big goal of mine even this year is connecting more with other educators and other education entrepreneurs because this can be a lonely road man you know uh, with the michael feekley experience and the show you know a lot of folks just don't see the back end and logistics that go into mm -hmm. really running a consultancy and supporting schools a lot of schools are skeptical of what we do because they don't necessarily know the value that we add so it's 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 an interesting process to find those pain points and um, let schools know that we're here to support them and help them be the best version of themselves Exactly. Definitely. So, Trey, tell the world who you are. Who is Trey? What well, makes up Trey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I, I put one of my shirts on today. It says facilitating purpose. And mm -hmm. I, I did that on purpose because facilitate means to make easier and purpose is your reason for doing. So my whole existence on the world, my, my reason for being, my why is to facilitate purpose. I, I'm here to help people do what they love or make it easier for people to do what they love. And so I, I do that in a lot of different ways. I, I'm certainly a man of service. I serve on Hartsville City Council. I've been a member for almost three years now. I'm an upper YMCA board member, board member on my psychology alumni association. And, and then with my boots on the ground, I just became the Dean of Students at the PD Math Science and Technology Academy, a K-12 charter school in Bishopville, South Carolina. So it's, it's really an honor to be able to serve a school community that's been dubbed in the corridor of shame that we renamed the corridor of opportunity. So being able to give those opportunities for kids who, who wouldn't otherwise have them has been amazing for me. And so there's been a, a, a long winding journey that included a, a 
international speaking champion and, and world championship of public speaking run. Um, but I'm really just blessed that God allows me to serve other people. And I think that the secret to living is giving and, and I, I can't wait to continue serving our youth in the next generation and, and bridging the gaps between who's coming next and, and the people that have come before and in the generations of X, the baby boomers and uh, so on and so forth. Oh, I, I love that. I, I love it. And you speak with such passion. I feel like it's just speaking through the screen right now. I, I love it. And you tell that it is your passion because you you just light up. And so, Trey, as you were growing up, did you, would you actually contribute your growing up, your, your upbringing to where you are today professionally? Um, absolutely. With, without a doubt, a hundred percent, you know, coming up, I, I moved 11 different times before I graduated college. I went to eight different schools growing up and there's so many lessons that I learned from life that I wish were taught in school. And so there's many things that I, I'm not your academic man. Don't ask me about pedagogy. I'm, I'm a big proponent of social, emotional learning, emotional intelligence, communication and really relationships, bridging the gaps. I think that communication is key and relationships rule the world. So th those are things that have stuck with me throughout my life. When I graduated kindergarten, my certificate said that I would be a professional baseball player and a child psychologist. And I did go on to play college football at the D1 level with Miami University. And I studied psychology as well. So everything has been a buildup to where I am today. And there's a great past world champion speaker that said, you, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You connect them looking backwards. So it's once you reach a milestone or you receive a blessing that you can actually connect the dots and you can see the work that God's done for you and the milestones and the tribulations that you've conquered to get to where you are today. So absolutely, you know, experience is life's best teacher, but at the same time, you got to be able to learn from wisdom your elders, the people around you, and, and those mistakes and successes from the people you surround yourself with, the quality people you surround yourself with so that you can pay those forward to the people um, that are coming right behind you. Definitely, definitely, yes, sir. Without them, again, there would be no us. So we have to pay tribute to them as well. I love it. Um, Trey, your resume is extensive. You've done so much. You do so much in the community. And we're going to talk about some of the things that you are currently doing now on your own besides your nine to five. Um, but let's start here. Yeah. How, how do you relax? What do you do for fun just to mm. kind of get away from different things? That, that's good. That's that's a great question. You know, I'm, I am a ready, shoot, aim type of guy. So I'm, I'm very kind of off the cuff and spontaneous. And I'm fortunate to have a wife who is spontaneous with me. So she, she a lot of times will get me out of the house. I, I like to stay in the house. I like to watch movies. I like to sit back and listen to music. Um, and, and honestly, I love what I do so much that that's also relaxing for me. But, you know, movies, music, relaxing, or it's my wife that I depend on to get us out of the house and go do something that's more fun or more romantic and things like that. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty steady and try to keep my routines together or else I'll be super discombobulated. So, you know, I'm, I'm in church every Sunday to, to get refueled. And every morning I've got a routine to kind of get me going and, and set my mind straight for the day. But, you know, for me, I'm a pretty simple man. Some folks say that I'm, uh, I, I always have a lot going on, but I'm, I'm very simple at the heart and I don't need much to make me happy. I got you. It shows. Oh, it shows. <laughs> really, it does. I feel like you just have that balance in life. And so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And with your and with that edge of wanting just to help people and things, you have a consulting firm. Talk to us about that. For sure, man. So I mentioned to you that I was out of, out of college. I was working at the Governor's School for Science and Math here in South Carolina. And that was an opportunity for me. I didn't know I was going to be an educator. But that was an opportunity for me to really work with the demographic that I wanted to be with, the tail end of Generation X or the or Y, the millennials, and the beginning of Gen Z, the next generation that we come that's now actually graduating school. And in that time, I was able to join Toastmasters, an international speaking organization, and I decided to compete for the World Championship of Public Speaking. Now, that was a six-month competition that started with 30,000 contestants 
and finished with the top 100 at the World Championships in D.C. And so I made it through the first four rounds and ended up making it to the semifinals of the World Championship, where I competed against the, the Jap Japanese-speaking champion, the Mexican-speaking champion, the Turkish-speaking champion, and, and champions in, in other states around the country. And I actually lost, Michael. That was a, a very humbling moment. I lost in the semifinal round, and the winner, Josephine Lee, went on to win third place in the world and was the top was a top three speaker. But it was that moment where I realized that, hey, you know what? I want to add more value to people. And while it was the best speech that I have ever given in my life called Every Decision Counts, you can see it on YouTube or my Facebook channel. And it's also the, the name of my book, Every Decision Counts. But at the same time, it was my worst speech because I was so prepared, I was so ready that I didn't tell the story that I was supposed to still tell. I, I kind of molded it into how I wanted people to see me. And, and I didn't like that. I felt like there was more truth behind me. And to truly make an impact, I had to let go of the expectations of the world and really just offer the value that God put in me and my assignment to fulfill. So I'm getting to your, your point of answering the question of the consultancy. So it, from there, I was like, man, how can I continue to add value consistently for free? And that's when the Dash podcast started. And so, you, you know, you've been on the Dash. And, and so we have 160 episodes now. So we've been at it every week consistently for about three years now. We've pumped out an episode every Friday or every Monday. There's been some different gaps there. That got us started. And then my first role actually as a consultant was as an emotional coach for teachers. I mentioned I had a psychology background and I ended up getting certified in emotional intelligence and communication. There's a couple of assessment tools that I use. So PDMSTA, where I'm the dean now, that actually brought me in just one day a week to support their teachers as their emotional coach. And that grew into uh, taking over the guidance department, college and career preparation. The following year parlayed into taking over the SEL program, the early college program, the behavior management, and, and um, not just that school, but last year we worked with 10 different schools across South Carolina, offering professional development and adult social emotional learning activities. And so again, it, it's that way to add value. You know, I think that SEL is to education as the alphabet is to reading. You can't have education without social emotional learning. And for those that don't know what SEL is, it's emotional intelligence just in e e education terms. So that's why the business was started to facilitate purpose, to bridge gaps, and to create opportunities for people to grow, lead, and experience. And so after three years of being fully running, I've kind of run backwards and had my consultancy and now I'm in a full-time role, but I do truly feel like um, it's been a growing into this point. And so at, at now with my consultancy, We've just launched a new platform called SEL Educators, which is Social Emotional Learning for Educators. That's the only platform that's dedicated to adult social emotional learning activities. There's extensive research for K-12, specifically for um, early childhood, K-2, but there is minimal, minimal, minimal opportunities for adults to practice their core SEL competencies, which are responsible for over 80% of the success in the workplace. If you're talking about education, industry, or anywhere in between. <laughs> I am done. That <laughs> sounds amazing to me. That sounds, and it's, a, it's, it's something to start something and then persons to actually see your worth, bring you in, and then you grow from there as well. Yeah. It, it, it's been it's been amazing. I mean, I, so in Hartsville, where I live, I call it the twilight zone because there's opportunities I've had here that I just just wouldn't have expected to have. You know, yeah. I'm from Indiana to start. I went to school in Ohio. And so South Carolina, when I moved here, I only knew one person and he was Tim Staples. He was a, a, a man who was a mentor to me in college. He taught one of my first classes in college. He was my supervisor down here at the governor's school. And that's the only reason I was here. I had family in Charlotte and Atlanta, but that's two and four hours away. And um, so just to be here in, in that grind, you know, so before I got to working with 10 schools this year, which some folks may not sound like a lot, but for me, I mean, it, it was great. My business grew over 30% last year. I think the prior year we may have worked with six schools. And so you, you don't see the 
across the state of South Carolina or the, the 300 emails that I sent to every university or even the, the emails that I'm still sending out now to people mm-hmm. who, who don't respond. And so there's a lot of work that goes behind it. But when you when you get a school that connects and when you have somebody that understands the value and, and just kind of has that connection similar to the way you and I had, it just works. So I'm, I'm absolutely a person first type of individual and I, I want to partner with people. I don't, I don't just want to do, do a job you know, get your two hour training in and be done. No, I, I want to give you tangible things that you can use today and that you can continue to use in the classroom. I'm not interested. That's why I stopped speaking, to be quite honest, because I, I didn't feel like you could get the value that I can. I didn't feel like I could deliver the value that I wanted to deliver in 30 minutes without really giving you some more substance. Now, I, I still speak and, and still want to speak, but I had to take it a little deeper with consulting and being able to provide those opportunities for folks to grow leading experience in a more expansive way. Love that. I love that. And that's where we go wrong in the profession a lot too. We focus on one avenue so much when mm-hmm. there are other things that we're stronger in yeah. that we can help others out in as well. I, yeah. I love that. But but Trey, we'll be right back. I want to hear more about that story. We'll be right back. Yes, Coming up, more with Trey. We'll be right back. The Finkley Experience is an educational consulting firm that specializes in first-generation education. We assist parents and their students with the college process. We train school administrators, and we also partner with colleges and universities to assist with their first-generation population. To learn more about our consulting firm and to purchase our book and workbook, please visit our website at thefinkleyexperience.com. chatting with Trey over here and I tell you we're just having a phenomenal um, conversation and learning so much about you I thought that you know you're becoming more three three dimensional to me now so mm, I'm really really mm. enjoying that now um, that's exciting you are just you're just so awesome and you just do <laughs> so much you you are in tuned with the emotional side of the aspect of coaching and teaching mm. and training um, and that shows through your podcast as well can you tell us more about that and how did that even start absolutely so man the dash i love the dash number one it, it's 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 my baby you know i think the dash started right before i fo- officially formed my llc i started the podcast and you know again it was right after that world championship of public speaking i said man how can i add more value to these people i've got these people watching me I, they just saw this speech I've got so much support, so much love. I've been so many places. How can I add more value for free? Uh, And and that's where the podcast started. So I actually started with two Facebook series. And there was one called The Dash. And The Dash is life, okay? There was a situation back in college where my coach put two dates up on the board. He said, here's today and here's game day. What's the most important thing that I just wrote on that board? And so we all started saying days, but he said, no, it's this dash right there in the middle because it's what you do between now and then that's going to make up the the outcome of that game. And it's the same for life. It's the same for life. When you go to a cemetery, you don't remember your mother, your father, your grandparents, your cousin because the day they're born or the day they die. You remember them because of what happened in that dash. And so when I say the dash, it's the decisions that you make every single day. When I wake up, am I gonna be pushed out of bed? Or am I gonna be pulled out of bed? When I do work, am I gonna do it with excellence? Or am I gonna do it with mediocrity? What decisions am I gonna make to set up my future for success? So it's that daily thing, just trying to grow 1% each day, but it's also the marathon of life. It's the blueprint that I'm gonna leave for my kids, for my family, for my life, for my little brothers to show them, hey man, here's the route I took, you choose your path. You can do what you want to do. Okay, so the dash started off as just a way to add that value, but it was challenging, meaningful, significant conversation on how to make the pain in your life the platform for purpose. But over the last 18 months, we've actually transitioned to focusing on education. And in that 18 months, we've narrowed down to focus more specifically on SEL, whereas before it was more school leadership, um, understanding diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
restorative practices, but now, now we really do hone in on SEL, practical skills and, and restorative practices and justice. So it's a way for teachers to come in, get what they need. And we say that we're facilitating solutions for school communities. So every guest that we have, they have solutions that are working in their schools and we do our best to uncover and highlight those solutions and share them with everybody who listens to the dash. Oh man, <laughs> we're finding situ uh, solutions to situations. Yes, right? indeed. That's yes, what it's indeed. all about. And you mm -hmm. mentioned as well earlier about your Toastmaster experience. You did not know at the time that the topic at hand that you were discussing about decisions was going to be the topic of your book. Talk about your awesome no. That that's that's a good that's a that's a, you got some good questions here, sir. You got some good questions. So that um, if I if I bring a full circle, so my speech, every decision counts, was about a mistake that I made back in college, and it was a mistake where I was in college and I was struggling. I was a scholarship athlete and just wasn't wasn't cutting it on the field. I didn't step on the field my first two years. I was having some trouble with. Uh, my personal relationships, my my athletic friends thought I was just an odd man out. And so I, I made a bad decision and decided to smoke some weed on spring break, uh, knowing good and well that I was going to be drug tested when I came back to school the, the following week. And you know, I wasn't I wasn't like the other teammates who were smoking all the time and knew knew how to detox or what to detox. So I was just nonchalant and went in and I failed my test. And I was scared that I was about to lose this $50,000 scholarship. And that's when those words about the dash, what are you doing with your dash? Are you making these decisions count? Like you, you had one moment where you were feeling bad for yourself and you made a decision that almost lost you a scholarship worth $50,000 a year. And, and even more difficult than that, I had to tell my parents that I did that, like just, just, just a mistake. And, and, and I wasn't one to want to make those. So um, that was the speech from, from the World Championship of Public Speaking, kind of shaped that up in, into a delivery. And that ended up being the message, every decision counts. And then shortly after, I had wrote a couple of transcripts, actually. So I've got a transcript for a book called My Friend Murphy. Instead of what can go wrong, will go wrong. It's what's supposed to happen, will happen. And um, but but that didn't work at first. And I said, I need to give a book out. I need to focus on somebody. Who who am I writing for? And it was for the kids, middle school, high school students. And as I mentioned earlier, there's so many lessons that I learned from life that should have been taught in school. And so it was actually from the podcast that I took these wonderful, amazing stories that I had interviewed people with, including my own, about how to surround yourself with only quality people, how to make new mistakes instead of the same mistakes, or how failing is what gets you started and it's actually your first attempt in learning. And so I actually took that podcast, I took the principles of them, and I wrote letters to my little brothers the students that I had worked with. So it was a very personal and engaging, real, relatable, authentic story workbook that students could use individually. It would be a great gift for um, your child on a birthday or Christmas, but it's also a book that you can read as a whole class. And so I facilitated different discussions, reading the book with, with middle school students and with high school students alike. And I, it's just, it's short, it's eight chapters, about 55 pages in every chapter has a workbook component to you where you're either reflecting on your own experience, you're asking your peers and your elders about their experience, or you're collaborating with someone else to come up with a solution um, as to how you can get better and make your decisions count. Yeah, I love this. And I guess that goes into my next question as well. With all that you do, all that you've said, all that you are still accomplished to do, what legacy do you want to leave? Mm, that's a good question. So when I was in high school, I said I wanted to have an impact on everybody I have a conversation with. And I think that's still the same. You know, I don't need you to remember my name. I don't need you to remember my face or, or a quote or anything like that. But if, if I can have a conversation with you that has an impact in some way, 
They say that a spaceship on the way to the moon, if it's off just one degree, will miss by more than 150 million miles. So my role in this world and in this life is just to give you that shift of one degree. You don't gotta remember me, but if you can be, have that impact of just one degree, I did my part. So I, I definitely want to leave a legacy for my children, for my wife, and I'm fortunate to come from a black family that has a long history. And as you know, because of um, our history in America, that's hard to come by. But we have a, a family Bible that dates back to the 1830s and it's survived fires. It's got the names of my ancestors written in it. So I've got 200 years of legacy from the Gamage family. And that means a lot to me. We come from a strong lineage to be able to continue to carry that name and push it forward is something that's amazing and something that uh, means a whole lot to me in this world. Love it. I love it. Oh, this is so good. How can they find your social media? I'm at Trey Gamage on, on every platform, T-R-E-G-A-M-M-A-G-E, -M -M on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. And I've got my website, TreyGamage.com, and my new platform, SELeducators.com. We've got five courses available right now, and four of them are free. So we'll be dropping a new course every month that is dedicated to adult social emotional learning activities. And I can't wait for you to check that out, along with my book, Every Decision Counts, which is on my website or any other book retailer. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trey, for so much for being on. I know that something that you said today will touch the mind of someone tomorrow. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. On the next Michael Finkley, Friday, we have Senator Kevin Johnson with us as we talk about family, his political career, the upcoming election, and what's next for him in the future. Don't you dare miss the next Michael Finkley. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Y'all, did you enjoy yourself? Did you learn something? What did you learn? What did you learn today? Put it in the comments below. I tell you, Trey, we had an amazing conversation. And even after the interview, we still on the phone, on the phone, but on the screens for just, I think maybe an hour, just talking and going back and forth and, you know, just uh, sharing ideas and things like that. It was amazing. Trey, I wish you well in your, all your endeavors. Thank you so much for being on today. And you will be back. Trust me, you're coming back. <laughs> Friday show. Friday, fun Friday, we have Senator Kevin Johnson with us and he is going to talk about his life as a um, public figure in the political world. He's going to talk about his family, the upcoming election, and what are his plans for the future, all on Friday. So don't, don't, don't miss that. Don't miss the Senator. Don't you miss it. All right. If you have not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Michael Finkley Show, and ring that bell for notification, and you'll receive an email from us saying, hey, uploaded content is available. And also, too, if you'd love to be a guest on The Michael Finkley Show, please email us at michael at thefinkleyexperience.com. Thank you so much for watching, and y'all, we'll see you Friday. Yeah, we'll see you Friday. Have a good one.